you know, look, most people just settle for what they want to live in. I, I don't consider that a real estate investment. It's a house offer, meaning meaning if the house offers it to you, don't take it. So Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, they've convinced all of America that a house is a great investment for the most part. It's a dead money investment. You make 80 grand in America, you are broke. And you can make sense of whatever you want to make sense of and you can say it's terrible. You make 400 grand a year, you're probably still broke. Now, nobody likes me saying this stuff. That's why I want to, I, mean, I want to come to the money money exactly. show because y'all can it. talk this shit. We can have blunt talks. <laughs>
I, I don't consider that a real estate investment. In fact, I've, I've been very vocal to say, hey, it's a terrible investment. It's a house offer, hmm. meaning, meaning if the house offers it to you, don't hmm. take it. So Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, they've convinced all of America that a house is a great investment. It's a shit investment for the most part. It's a dead money investment. Your money gets tied up in one asset that does never pays you. You have to pay it. You have to feed it. The kind of real estate I'm talking about is two units, four units, eight units, 16 units, even bigger than that. Like it, the bigger you go, the easier it is. Easier it is to buy it. Really? The lower your credit score has to be. Uh, but Fannie Mae, Fannie Mae's getting ready to come out with something November 18th this year. If you buy four units and live in it, you can get a 5% down payment. Wow. I'm a little curious why they're offering that shit when the rates went to 8.5%. <laughs> but, but same thing Bank of America did uh, about uh, 11 months ago. They offered, they said, we need to start offering first-time buyers uh, in uh, black and brown communities uh, um a no money down loan or 3% down loan. I said, yeah, y'all waited until the interest rate was 7% and then you offered it because you could have done it when it was two, but you didn't. But my point is, uh, some of the things you mentioned are great. I like the residential because we're not, you're not going to get rid of renters in America. You're going to print, you're literally going to fabricate uh, renters over the next uh, 10 yeah. or 15 or 20 years. So do you think we're going to go much heavier into rentals? Yes. Or people less, less people will be purchasing? Yes. Like right now, the divide between ownership and renting is about, as much as people complain about the rents, as you probably know, I think the average rent in America is $1,875, which you might complain about. The average mortgage is almost 4000 Whoa. So that's, if renting doesn't make sense, at half of what it costs a mortgage, how does a mortgage make sense, which is just a fancy bullshit word for pay rent for 30 years to the bank. Hmm. Cause the bank's going to make 7% for 30 years. That's you'd have to make 210% on your money, 200% on the, the home purchase. Let's say it's in orange County where the ho house is 800 grand. You'd have to sell the house for a $2 million just to pay the interest back wow. and break even not, not property taxes, not maintenance, not the wear and tear you put on three roofs in that period of time. You paint it at six times. You've been through seven different lazy boys, probably three wives. Your kids have moved out, hate your guts and don't even want to come back on Thanksgiving. Wow. That's the house you're stuck in. That's an American dream. That is what it's the great American dream is a home ownership. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about I buy something, other people rent, I collect the cash flow. And I wait for the rents to go up, and over over long periods of time, uh, you create wealth. Do you like the fix and flip world? Or do you like just buying and holding forever? I hate anything that requires a flip, because hmm. I because because I'm paying the highest taxes on the flip. So, and I got to be right all the time. And most of the fix and flippers want to do what I'm doing. They want twelve thousand units, paying them two grand a month. They don't want to be. I buy something, I sell it, I have a chicken. The biggest mistake I made in real estate was not buying more real estate and number two, ever selling any piece of real estate I ever had, hmm. particularly if it had any kind of scale. So if someone wants to start making money and they're just getting their, they're getting their job, they're making 60 grand a year, and then they get up to 70, then 80. When is the time to make the final that leap to buy that first unit or two unit or four unit type property? Well, it's 70 or 80 grand. You probably don't have any money left over. If you live right here where we live, you don't have any money left over. So first thing I think people need to understand is like you cannot make 80,000 and think you're ever going to make an investment. Unfortunately, the government won't tell you the truth on that. I know Adam, your, your boy Newsom won't. Not my boy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm just kidding with you. But, but I'm just saying like the government, Biden's not going to tell you the truth. Nobody's going to tell you the truth. The Republicans aren't. You make 80 grand in America, you are broke. And you can make sense of whatever you want to make sense of, and you can say it's terrible. You make four hundred grand a year, you're probably still broke. Now, nobody likes me saying this stuff. That's why I want to. I, mean, I want to come to the money money exactly. show because y'all can it. talk this shit. We can have blunt talks. <laughs> but if you talk, make four hundred grand in this country. I mean, I know, and you probably know. The viewer probably knows somebody working at Facebook or J.P. Morgan that makes four hundred grand, and they cannot figure out how to send their kids to school pay a mortgage or rent or their cars. They're fucking broke. It's the in, at the end of it, there's no money left over. So the American public's never going to be told by the government, you need more money in order to have any chance at having any kind of financial freedom because you're never going to have enough money left over to invest. That's why they set up all these little scams in government pyramid programs. Okay. 
the little the little scams are 401ks, IRA, save your money, okay, buy some life insurance. They're freaking scams. These are house offers, okay? This is what, when you're playing blackjack in Vegas and they say, would you like insurance? <laughs> right. No. <laughs> No, how do you know you don't want it? Because you offered it to me. <laughs> Fuck, you offered me a free seat at the table that I shouldn't have taken that shit. You offered me a free drink. You offered to take my cash and convert it into your coins with your name on it. I shouldn't have taken anything, including the free door, the front door that was open, and the room you offered me. Okay, I should not be anywhere near this place because your job is to offer me shit where I pay money. And, and so that's the same thing with the banking community. Wall Street is basically a massive casino of offers. You know, puts, options, get in, get out, liquidate as fast as you want to. That's why I like the Bitcoin thing, because you're not net, you're going to you're going to invest in it and wait for it. It's, it's exploding today for anybody Seriously. that waited on it. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, stocks, the liquidity thing. Hey, you can invest in an ETF that everybody tells you you should do from Ray Dalio, Warren Buffett, J Jamie, Jamie uh, Diamond. They all tell you you should put your money in there. Yeah, exactly. You know why? Because they're behind the scam. Okay, it's like asking somebody whether you should trim your beard today. Mm -hmm. If it's a barber, he's going to say yes. You should, bro. You need a little black dye in it too. Okay, so um, house rules, man. Quit playing by the house rules. And the house rules are this: save your money. It's the way you were brought up. It's the way I was brought up. They tell you save your money, get a good job, uh, buy a house. Okay. Go to college. You need to go to college because you're not going to get real money if you don't go to college. Uh, I don't know anybody that went to college that's getting 215 million views on YouTube. Okay? <laughs> um, and uh, then buy a house and then get a retirement account <clears throat> and keep saving your money. And the only people that are benefiting from that is Wall Street and the banks. So when does somebody start? First, you got to earn more income. Two, you need to bury all the extra income. If you can go from 70 grand to 100 grand, that extra 30, you should invest it all. This is my belief doesn't make me right so don't try to make me wrong it's worked for me so i can just show you that okay take the entire amount from 70 to 100 and invest all that mm. in something that you will never lose that drips that pays you some kind of cash flow every month uh and then never improve the quality of your life your cars where you live until your passive income could fund it yes so if your kid wants that. a bike mm -hmm. pay it out of ca passive income Okay, until you got the passive income, don't buy your kid a bike because it's a bad investment. They're going to throw it down on the side of the road and not use it here in about three weeks. And don't waste money, man. Don't do stupid shit. Money matters. It does. It matters a lot, dude. And, and the people say, you know, some of your audience is going to start, I hate Cardone. It's always talking about money. Yeah, because it matters. You know, when you go to Whole Foods, they ask for money. You try to get a meeting at J.P. Morgan, they're going to be like, how much money you got? Like, it's, it's simple. You need money. Okay. And money and happiness have nothing to do with one another. When I'm looking for money, I'm looking for money. I'm not looking for happy. I can get happy sometimes with some money. But just because you have money doesn't mean you're happy. It also doesn't mean you're unhappy. whole concept behind the Money Mondays is we all grew up thinking it's rude to talk about money. Yeah. You couldn't ask your parents about <laughs> loans, jobs, IRS, taxes, 401k. You couldn't ask them about any of those things because that would be rude. At the dinner table, at lunch, at school, at college, anywhere yeah. in between – Nobody talks about money. And that's why we created this podcast is to have these blunt discussions. So hopefully none of you guys are offended by the things that come out of Grant's mouth today or my mouth or Tarzan's mouth because we're doing it for you. We want you to make more money. We want you to invest money. It doesn't do anything specifically for us outside the butterfly effect that if you make more money, we make a better country. We all win in the long run. So as people are going along their financial journey and they're finally to make, ready to make that first step, they buy that fourplex, they saved up 100 grand, they put 70 grand down, they got 30 grand to remodel a little bit. Walk us through their steps of like when they're doing their first property, what should they be thinking about for the long term after that? Well, you know, you really should look at the first property with a bigger like a like not on a budget, not how much you have for down payment. You should look at. Like I learned how to look at deals for a million dollars. I made a, I made a five million dollars on my my first reel. I did a single unit, a single unit, and then I did 48 units. Whoa. Okay, my 48 <laughs> Sorry, units, my 48 jump. units made me uh, 4.8 million dollars in 37 months plus cash flow for the whole time I owned it. I was like, dude, I just cracked the, I just cracked the code. Just got rid of the single families. I'll never do those again, ever. 
I couldn't, no matter what would happen with those single family, they would have never made me five, almost $5 million. Right. Impossible. They can't do it. So now I started saying, oh, dude, you got to look for scale. So you guys that are out, you got 80 grand. Don't look at, I'm going to buy, like buying, buying four units is not like going to Target with a budget. You shouldn't, look, you're, you're buying based on how much dough you have rather than, dude, what if I put my 80 with 10 other people, we have 800, now I can buy a $3 million deal. Interesting. What you're really looking for is math, not, not, you're looking for a property first. I'm looking for the best property first, and then you back in there. Don't take the money, the bag you have, or the limitation you have, and then try to place that with the deal. Find the best piece of real estate you can buy, okay? And then money will always find the best piece of real estate. Debt will also find it. So I think I did it backwards in the beginning. I went and bought what I could afford rather than what is the best microphone that I can buy, or in this case, best piece of real estate, best location. And if does it have enough scale, okay, like 32 units, if I could find 32 units in a great location where the rents could be raised 200 bucks, I know for sure I make a million dollars on that. Every 200 bucks, 32 times makes a million dollars about a million two actually really? yeah so it's just a simple math formula 32 units is the perfect start that would be like if i was starting over today i'd be like 32 units i mean i could never start over today because i have all this confidence now because my first deal would be 300 fuck the 32 let's go <laughs> 300 because then i'll make 10 million dollars on that deal not 1 million and i know the math is going to work and it's going to work every time it's just when does the math work out for me so if i find 32 units the rents are a thousand bucks and i raise them to 1200 because they're under rented undervalued not taking care of the tenant old guy in there he's been there he didn't need to raise the rents and i raise those 200 i make 1.2 million dollars and i do that every time so if that's with the three of us doing the deal or 10 of us doing a deal it's better for 10 people to be involved in a 1 million dollar score from the get-go than to be one person own a four unit deal where I can't raise the rents, much less a one unit deal. Because if I can raise a one unit deal 200 bucks, that's 200 bucks, that's it. And it doesn't really change the value of that property. Mm -hmm. But if I can do that at scale, so we have the, we, today I've done this over and over again, 39 times or something, we own 39 different properties. There's 12,000 units, 12,440 units. If I change the rents 20 bucks, dude, the amount of wealth, <laughs> right. like if I change them 20 bucks, every six months which is not a lot that's not a big rent bump right. nobody i'm not taking advantage of people uh then you you start talking about explosive amounts of wealth in the future that's different than my other business where i'm hustling and i'm trying to sell something flip something make some money sell a piece of jewelry get a deal get a gig get a sponsor whatever it is that's hustle and that's earned income i take all that earned income buried in this this asset so find scale find a great location i never compromise location every time i've compromised location i've been spanked later and i've done it because i believe buy low buy the worst house on the great street don't do that buy the best shit <laughs> in the best location and pay the extra price to do it and then three uh hold on as long as you can through good times and bad times and we're getting ready to go through some some terrible times so i've heard you say before about not keeping cash can you walk us through the concept about not keeping cash yeah, so look, if you come give me a million dollars right now, or I win a million dollars, I don't want the money. I, I mean, I do want the money for a second, but I want to get rid of the money as fast as I got it. I want to take the money, pay my taxes, and whatever's left over, let's say there's a million left over, I want to get rid of the money. I want to go back to zero. I want to go to the thing. I was in the condition of no money when I won. Why would I want to... Get comfortable. Why would I want to have a million dollars right now? The very thing that got you... Like, I see people start a business and they go hustle. They have nothing, man, nothing the first two or three or four years. And then four years, something happens and they start collecting money and they start buying houses and they start... Three cars, four watches. Retirement accounts, watches. And I'm like, why, why are you doing all that, bro? That's not what got you this. I deserve it. You don't deserve shit, bro. Nobody deserves anything. When you get money, you don't deserve more. You just earn more. Hmm. The question is, can you keep it? And a lot of people, a lot of people you know... Oh, yeah. Dude... They, <laughs> They hit it, they get it, and they lose it. Mm -hmm. 
and I think they can do it again. Yeah, I, I was talking to Mike Tyson. Mike's like, man, Grant, if I'd have done what, what, what you what you suggest with money, he's like, I would be worth two or three billion sure. dollars today. And he mm -hmm. would. He blew through three hundred million back then. Yeah, that's like a billion now. Yeah, like three hundred million back in the eighties and nineties. Like, yeah, he'd be an actual billionaire. Like, he would be. And, and he'd still be the great Mike Tyson right. that he is today, okay? Right. And the managers wouldn't have ripped him off. All the, the bad advice wouldn't have got him because he wouldn't have had the money. So what I do is every time I get a million dollars, okay, and I try to do that as often as possible, I get a million dollars, wham, first thing I do is bury it in a, a real estate project where I cannot get to it, okay? I bought a little bit of Bitcoin, but not, not, nothing in comparison to the real estate because the real estate pays me a drip, mm -hmm. It gives me money every month, okay? It rewards me up or down. The value's up or down. It doesn't matter. I still get a reward of some money because of that decision I made. And so <clears throat> I go back now. I wake up Monday. Monday, the money Monday. I wake up. Uh, shit, I had my million dollars on Friday. Fuck, it's gone today. I can't get it. It's illiquid. I'm going to get back to work. I can't go back to and say, I, just, I changed my mind Tuesday. I need some money. It, nope, I can't get on. it. Emergencies can't get it. My brother can't get it. The law can't get it. Okay? The federal government can't get it. They're like, hey, man, you owe, bro, what can I tell you? I'm fucking broke. Okay? People that are broke don't give money. Okay? So now, Monday, I got to go back and hustle again. And I keep my hustle. And everybody's like, why are you always hustling? I'm broke all the time, bro. I don't have any money on me right now. Mm -hmm. Right? So I got to hustle. And, and, and then I just keep playing that game of hustle, earn money, deliver a great product or service or an event. Somebody pays me for that highly taxed event, highly taxed money. Take that money, bury it in this asset that provides me with some tax shelters and a drip and long-term appreciation. So whether I'm around when I can't do events anymore, I can't do stuff with you, my charities, I could set it up to where those properties as rents go up continue to disperse money to my charities my kids my family or anything that i you know feel good about long after i'm alive so there's a question that i ask there's actually one only only one question i ask over and over and over and i've never gotten the same answer and i'm not gonna get the same answer now when grant cardone passes away in 100 years from now 200 years from now yeah. however long you live right god bless you how much i'm gonna do that anaconda this weekend <laughs> <laughs> Might be a week. <laughs> <laughs> and Grant Cardone's a multi-billionaire. 50 years, 100 years from now, whenever that time is, what do you leave to the kids? You, you've never had the same answer? Not once. Not one time. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, it, it just depends on what the kids want to do, right? You, you know, so um, maybe Scarlett wants some of it. Maybe Sabrina wants some. I don't know. I don't even know what they want of it. Not every, not every kid wants somebody else's money. So um, I know they're not entitled to it. You know, do they what do they want to do with it? So, how much will I leave them? I, I won't leave them with the whole thing. You know, right now they, they I don't give them anything now, dude. They live off a drip. So we we give them a salary. She works for me. She works for the company. She is a write off. Okay. I first thing she just she saw a video where I was saying she, baby, my Sabrina's a write off. She's like I didn't know I was a write off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are a write off. Okay. So we gave her a contract. Mm -hmm. We give her. Uh, dollars for that contract and she has a performance clause she's here today because she wants to but this is part of her contract okay so she gets paid once a year in january we give her a little a little, a little piece you know and then that piece she gets to look at it for a second and then we convert that to cardone capital which invests in one of those real estate projects right. okay now we've been doing that four or five years after a period of time those that real estate project starts flipping her a little dough i think she's to 600 bucks a month right now that's what she lives off mm -hmm. anything above 667 dollars she's got to come to me for a loan she's got to come to me with a trade she's got to come with me some offer okay <laughs> something i'm not paying i don't give her an allowance i remember i had a 25 dollar allowance okay and a week or a month a, a month yep a week? I, saw, I was like, you're rich. How, how, old are you? how old are you? 42. Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up with fucking $25 was a lot of money. So, <laughs> so I was like, man, $25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then, and then what happens with the allowance for all the parents out there is your kids are always going to, they're just going to take it for granted. You know, you're going to do it one time, they're going to be like, oh, that's cool. Second time, they're going to be like, hey, you know, third time, they, they expect it. And fourth time you do it, they're going to be like, this uh, is not a raise. Yeah. Exactly. So we don't do that. Never give them an allowance. So anything they want to decide how to use money. Hey, I want some Ray-Bans, you know? Okay, good. Well, you, you got some money. It's your money. Do whatever you want with it. But it's paying them. They're earning it. So 
to answer your question. And then, let's say let's say it's five or six years. By then, she'll probably have they'll probably have a million dollars of their sure. own money invested mm-hmm. that they earned that I wrote off because they worked for me, and then they have that 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 real estate that's paying them every month. So, hopefully, I would never walk to them and say, "Here's eight hundred million dollars." <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, by the way, Scarlett, here's eight hundred million. Uh, Elena, there's eight hundred million. I'm dead now, and you guys, w- 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 they don't even know what to do with all this. Yeah. You know, so I wouldn't do that to them. Now, whether they want to run the company or be a part of the company, it'll be up to them. All right, let's take off the real estate. I wouldn't, even, gi- I wouldn't <laughs> even give my charity that much money mm. at one time. Yep. I will never bomb any entity with that much money at one time. I'd give them a little piece because who knows, maybe you give somebody too much money. Uh, I was talking to Adam Newman about this that founded WeWorks. He's like the number one mistake he made was taking, taking too much money at one time. It can overwhelm a person. For sure. It did for him. Yeah, I mean, but one, one, <laughs> we one. work didn't work. Right. Okay, let's take off our real estate hat and okay. put on the event hat. Okay. 10X is obviously one of the most legendary events. It's been going on for many, many years. Talk us through the evolution of going from 5,000, 9,000, 32,000 people at a baseball stadium. Yeah. Like, walk us through the concept of 10X. So, uh, the, our first 10X event was in Cabo San Lucas with, I don't know, there was 86 people there. We just picked a name for it <laughs> called the 10X. I had just written this book. And then the next one, the, the, the first official one after that had 2,200 people. We did that in, we did that in, we sold that out in 71 days. Well, I'm like, God damn, dude. I never thought I could do that. Mm-hmm. It was a Christmas thing. My staff was starting to get a little antsy. They were tired. Oh, we working too hard. I said, you guys are working too hard, huh? Every time they do this, I do this. Oh, you think you're working too hard? Huh? It's 71 days from now, we have an event to do. I booked a hotel and then all of a sudden it gave them a new problem, right? And then we sold it out and then they quit complaining. The next one we did, Mandalay Bay, it was 12, that went to 2,200 to, to 12,000 people. And then we went and did the stupid one yeah. with <laughs> Marlin Stadium with 34,000 people yeah. in it. We'll never do that again. No. It's too big. It's too big. <laughs> it's too big. It's unmanageable. It's just, you know, it's, you, you just, it, you, even parking cars for it is, it, it becomes a nuisance. People leaving is, it's two hours to leave. It's just ridiculous. So, but, but I'm glad I did it. Yeah. I knew I would only have to do it one time right, and put then the flag in the ground. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I did a big one. Yeah. <laughs> I did that on Super Bowl weekend. Yeah. So, um, that's how it came about. And then, uh, you know, the goal in the future, that's going to transition to where people do not pay for that event. That'll oh, be really? a free event for partners, investors. Got it, for your yeah, members yeah, and it'll be students. For, yeah, exactly. Got it, very So cool. it's gonna be a paid, uh, completely, it won't be for students. It'll be for members, investors, partners. Got it. Um, employees of other companies that, that we're affiliated with and, uh, and we'll continue to do it, a high class, you know, spend a bunch of money on it. If I even continue to do them in the future, I think all that goes away in the not so near future, it'll all disappear. To, to, for us to do something else. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I'll That's be good. out of the event business. I'll be out of podcasting. You'll be out of podcasting. Yeah, I'll be out of all this. I won't be doing this. So. You're going to run the country or something? What no, are you doing? no, I'm not going to run the country. <laughs> <laughs> You're the president? <laughs> I was like, you want to tell us something? No, 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 no. <laughs> all right. So, what is the ultimate goal with Cardone Capital? You have $4.5 billion in growing assets yep. under management. What is the goal for it? Where is Grant Cardone? We're gonna, I'm going to grow that. I'm going to 10X that, dude. I'm going to put $100 billion of real estate together. And I'm going to raise $10 billion um, privately without pension funds. We're not using debt anymore. We're buying. I'm buying the best assets I can possibly buy. We're looking at a deal in, uh, on Michigan Avenue right now. Uh, I just put this under contract, actually. I'll do this deal without wealthy people's money and without look at this whoa yeah that's <laughs> serious this was a 300 million dollar building i'll buy for 150 million dollars from an institution Jeez. and i will not put bank debt on it we'll bank it ourselves i'll do that with regular ordinary families that are doing ten thousand, hundred grand accredited and non-accredited and i'm going to build a bank and I'm going to do this over and over again. I'll become the largest. I'll say it here on this show for the first place I've ever said it. Okay, I will become the largest property owner in America 
and it will be done without banks and institutions. This has never been done at this scale before, and I'll do it with crowdfunding using social platforms. Mm. And one day, the internet will quit calling me an influence, uh, what is it, uh, internet celebrity. I got, <laughs> I got $5 billion worth of goddamn institutional quality real estate, and they're calling me a, a, a what is it? A, a, internet a, celebrity. A fucking <laughs> stupid internet celebrity, which that, that, that's not even a job or a title, okay? So that's what we want to do, and I want to do it without Bank of America, without Citibank, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs. Those people have never done anything in this country for good for for ordinary families, and it's never been done at this scale. Nobody's ever taken this on. So this is the great project of my life. To like literally, uh, we paid out forty paid out forty seven million dollars in distributions this year, fifty three last year, hundred million and in 18 months to ordinary families. Your family could have got a check. Yours, without doing any of the work, you scribble a check, wire the money, bang, and we just sit and wait for this thing to get back to its normal value, which we think is two or three times that. Hmm. So that's a goal, small goal, man. I like it, 100 you billion. Know, <laughs> you know? It's never been done at this scale before. We've done, we have thir- uh, 13,000 investors now. I've only had trouble with one of them in, in five years. It's a good ratio. Uh, it was over five thousand dollars. It was a three-year lawsuit. I won it every time we went to court. Three-year lawsuit must have cost you half a million dollars. Cost me one million fifty-eight thousand dollars <laughs> and seventy-four cents. Over five thousand bucks. Over five thousand dollars. Principal, he didn't want to pay the five grand. Yeah. Well, nobody, well, nobody else. None of the other lawyers will fuck with me now. Mm-hmm. They're like, fuck. We ain't getting anything out of that guy. He'll fight forever. So, the courts, the California courts, uh, judged in my favor twice. They were claiming. I mean, stupid shit, dude. Like all these podcasters and YouTubers, not you guys, but all the trash junk punks out there, the trolls and clickbaiters. The, he's a fraud. He's fraudulent. He's got a pyramid scheme. It's con game. I'm suing every one of those guys. I've been waiting till I won. I'm coming for you. You guys, wherever you are, you know who did it. You clickbait bitches. I'm coming for you. I will do everything I can to bankrupt your ass and make sure your YouTube channel is either controlled and regulated or taken down. One of the two. The time has come. Yes. On notice now. I love you it. You don't notice, bitches. I'm telling you. I ain't a back door guy. I'm a front door guy. I'm coming right through your fucking front door. Okay? So I fought this thing for three years just to be right. And I knew we hadn't taken advantage of anybody. The court said no fraud, no fraudulent, no overpromoting. All these th- claims were made by clickbaiters. No overpromoting. There was no videos promising some crazy return. None, none of that happened. It's crazy in our country, by the way. First of all, it was CNN and Fox. Those guys have been doing it for years, ABC and CBS. But now this virus, man, of Anybody can say anything they want about For you. Sure. Anything, anything. Oh, your videos are fake, man. You actually never even been with a snake. No snakes. They can say anything. Mm-hmm. Dude, you're a fraud. You're a con. They can say anything, and nobody can do anything. You you, you hit to YouTube and say, take this down. They're like, no, we're not taking it down. Yep. It's free. It, it, they love the action. So... Um, I'm going to do this for all of you out there that have ever been trolled on. I'm going to go spend the money and time and energy and resources to see what I can do. I don't know that I can do it to stop the trolling and the clickbait titles. I know it's cool and everything until it's done to you. Right. And then it's not so cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm excited to watch. Yes. I, I hate just, trolls. Huh? I Same. hate trolls. I despise it. So my agency, I have 3,500 influencers. And the, so many of the girls cry to me and tell me about all the trolls, the comments, the haters, and the things. Yeah. And the main thing I tell them is, if you just block and delete Adam four four four, yeah, poof, he disappears from the planet. Yeah, gone. gone. Yeah, I'm and not talking the, about that guy. Yeah, I don't mind those yeah, guys exactly. in comments. I mind the guy that watches something, takes it, and then does Spends a whole it. video yeah. on it because he's a whore to Google's AdSense dollars. You're basically a slave to the master Google trying to trash my name in order to get a penny. Dude, all you got to do is call me and I'll give you a penny. Mm-hmm. Okay, but don't trash my name because it's going to cost you everything you got. Mm. This is going to be fun to watch. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. <laughs> all right, so for the last topic, we talk about making money, investing money. Let's talk about the charity side. Not all charity is money related. There can be energy, power, social media, yeah. showing up. doesn't have to be, your daughter doesn't have to go like give 600 bucks because she got 600 bucks. She can go out there and put her time and energy in donating toys dealing with the homeless helping feed feed people etc talk to us about the philanthropy why is it important for people whether it's companies or individuals to do some things charity related 
You know, I got out of a treatment center when I was 25 years old, and the only thing I did every day was either work on myself to make myself better or help, period. I've been doing that since for 40 years. I'm either going to help myself get better and my business, my company, my family, or I'm going to, I'm going to, the rest of the time I'm going to help somebody else. This has never, ever let me down. Helping other people, whether it's time, energy, resources, taking the time to like, get somebody to the hospital, like doing a nice thing, passing the, the bellman. Like there's charity can be like a million different things, right? It doesn't have to be just for the, the guy broken down. That's the panhandling on the street corner. It could be, you know, seeing somebody struggle through an airport or having a bad day or just saying hi to somebody or man, are you all right? Anything I could do for you? It's not just money. Now, when it is money, you know, you guys that feel good about giving somebody $1, no offense, but $1 ain't going to change anything for anybody. Like, if you're going to be charitable for some homeless guy, hit him with 100 Like, because you're not changing his life with a dollar. He's like, okay, what am I going to do with a dollar? Like, now he's got to go hustle some more. You're just giving him a job. And you feel better. You're like, I did something. You really didn't do anything. And so I, I don't know if people will take this in the right way or not, but that's why people need to get their money right. You need to get you right. You need to be charitable for you first. I really believe people need to take care of themselves first better. Because I know a lot of people that are very charitable to others, but don't help themselves. Mm -hmm. So get charitable about you, man. You know, invest in yourself, man. Nothing wrong with you going to your event. Nothing wrong with you spending money on you. That's charity to yourself so that one day you can actually do charity to somebody else or in scale. And it doesn't have to be money. It could be holding events. Like we did that 34,000 person event and everybody, oh, it's so big, it's so big. I had 2,000 firemen, military, nurses, they were there for free. Mm -hmm. And that was good for them, but I had to have the seats. The event's gotta be big enough to be able to give somebody something for free. So charity has never let me down. I've raised, I don't know, $128 million for other charities. Uh, I feel good about that. I've given 20 of that, of the 120, or 100, whatever number it's in. And, um, I feel better about the money I help raise than I feel about the money I actually gave myself. Mm -hmm. Just bringing other people together yep. to put a school there, to put something together, you know, it's always, uh, I always go home and feel better about myself. We're bringing the world's largest toy drive to Miami. So I'm going to give you a call to yeah. send, send your staff over there. I don't need money. I just need staff. Yeah, and good. And lots of people. And you got a lot of people I'll get you, I'll help get you some attention for it too. We, last year we broke the Guinness Book World Records, and this year we're doing ten cities in fifteen days. Wow! And Miami is one of the biggest ones, obviously, wow. because it's Miami. Yeah. So. When is that? Uh, first week of December. Okay. I'll send. I'll send. I'll, the exact I'll be there. I'll help you. Okay. Last question. So the world is in turmoil, yeah. and we're bombarded by media, fake news. Don't know who to believe. <laughs> There's just so much chaos in the world. What would you say to people to stay calm in the chaos and focused on their world? Well, I don't know if I'd stay calm. You know. I would get, I would get, I would get, you know, I mean, I believe in some level of anger. So anger works for me, man. You know, I figured out how to convert it to a, like when you hit me, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming, man. I like being hit. I like you. I like you. You guys do you want to take me down? Want to do this? That's energy for me. I convert it. It's all free energy. Fucking bring it on. Ding dong. Just give me as much goddamn energy as you got. Okay. Just bring Just give it, give it to me because I'm going to take and convert that energy. I'm not going to try to get rid of it. Like your friend said, she doesn't want it. I don't even want to delete it. I want to use it and consume it. Mm. So I would tell you guys that what's happening right now, specifically in the Gaza strip, I think you're talking about, maybe not, I don't know, Ukraine, Russia. Uh, what about America, man? Okay. I would expect most of this podcast is how about right? Goddamn here. You know, your schools are failing. You need to get pissed off about that shit. We just had the biggest bank failure in the history of the United States, and nobody even talks about it as an event. These are all cover-ups. They're cover-ups of the last thing that was the last thing. So you guys need to get pissed off, man. You can't just keep meditating because I know a bunch of you meditating and praying and shit is fucking starting to stack up now. So your prayers either ain't working or you ain't meditating, right, because it's starting <laughs> to get weird, right? We got four, you got 14 boats going from China to the damn Mediterranean. We got a bunch of boats going over there ourselves. They're not boats, they're damn cities. Mm -hmm. And uh, that doesn't concern me as much as we got an open border over here. This stuff will happen here. We got a failing school system, failing healthcare. We got cities in crumble. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I know people that come from third world countries, they'll go to Baltimore inner city and say, I would never live here. And they're from Nicaragua. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, man. When third world says, I don't want to live here. You got parts of LA that are falling apart that were sure. pristine, perfect for sure. just five years ago. So I would tell the American public, you need to get angry. Okay. You need to get noisy. Okay. You need to say, stop this madness. Uh, your, your kids are in school systems where, can I talk about this? Sure. Yeah. Your kids are being encouraged to, that they could be anything they want to be. They can be a, a boy. They can be a girl. They can flip. They can be a cat. They can cut their dick off. But hey, how about some, you can be successful. How about you can get some abs? How about you can work out one hour a day? Like, wh when do we get back to some of those things? Um, I would just tell people, hey, don't make sense of the chaos. Get angry and, and write somebody or tell somebody or stand up. We took our kids out of the school system because I don't want them around other idiots. So that's what I would tell people, man. Shit. Amen. And it gets you bank right. Yeah. Get your money right because the only people that are gonna only people that are gonna be free on this planet are people with big money. And that's the way the stack is. So if you think you're gonna just get by and have your choices, you're not gonna have them. All right, guys, you're listening to Look the at Money that. Mondays. Four forty-four. Right right? That's OJ Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> we'll obviously try to get Grant back on here. We got to pull up to the private jet to find him, so we'll have to find him somewhere in the country to get can him I back. Can I just on add one Heck thing yeah, about that? So it, the please. RV, they said, "Hey, can the RV go out to the planes?" And I'm like, "You guys, are you guys crazy? Those guys <laughs> might have bombs on that damn RV. Blow up every plane out there. Don't, don't let that RV out there." <laughs> So, as I said earlier, we all grew up thinking it's rude to talk about money. That's why the podcast is here. So, please share, like, comment, subscribe, etc. Follow Grant Cardone across all social media platforms. Enjoy his content. Learn from him. Learn from the topics about real estate specifically because that's what people need to be looking at and investing. Make sure to check out The Real Tarzan. Go to themoneymondays.com and we'll see you guys next Monday.